Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Now, you'd have to have been living under a rock if you hadn't seen any of the stuff going around online about all the problems with Intel CPUs dying and crashing and there being loads of problems. Now, yesterday they did come out saying that there is probably a fix en route, but the problem was high voltages. Now, I've stayed out of this. Uh, up until this point because if I'm completely honest about it I've had problems trying to get my processors to fall over fall over instability that sort of thing but I also will not run my processors at stock and when I did do my very first review on the 14900k I said the voltages were too hot and every time I was going to test them in the motherboard I was going to undervolt them because I didn't think it was necessary. Now, one of the things I do want to say is we've already kind of got a fix. If it does come down to just voltages, there is already a fix. I worked on a guide for it a very long time ago. But one of the things I do kind of want to lean into is if you look at the main three, they're all very different boards and the way that they deal with the voltages anyway. Gigabyte is, sadly, by far the worst. Their voltages have always been high. I say it in all the reviews. I remember seeing 1.45, 1.458 when I was testing the 14900K originally and on a wide variety of the boards. Asus is actually the one I'm most disappointed in because what Asus have been doing is they've just done what Intel wanted them to do. So they go along with the Intel reference voltage patterns and that's not something they used to do. Asus used to be very proactive. They would have had lots of stuff bringing all the voltages down. They would have had teams on it and they would have been the best. Now they're just, they're, they're just another one with the problem. Weirdly, the ones that have been more proactive and out of the three have the lowest voltages out of the box are MSI. Now, I'm not going to say that their uh, approach has been perfect because there's still room to bring them down, but for an auto profile out of the three, if you pushed me to say which one is the best, it's that one. But you still need to do the undervolting guide. So when you do still need to go manual and get into it, it, it doesn't really matter which one you want in regards to that. Because like I said, you do need to still undervolt them. Um, and like I've said, every single processor and every single board I have undervolted. The uh, i5 and above, I say you definitely need to do it. The i5 is on a tipping point though, but with the guide that I will link up above, underneath, and there's a written guide as well, effectively what you can do is lower your voltages and then bring your temperatures down but you'll keep all of the performance that you should have got. And in some cases, with the gigabyte boards, for example, your performance will actually increase because it will be throttling, or it won't be throttling at all, uh, because one of the problems is they get so hot, they then throttle, they get throttled and then throttle. But what happens when you undervolt them is you actually allow them to work as hard as your cooling can kind of cope with them with a, a reasonable 360 millimeter AIO with the undervolt, you'll be able to keep it uh, below 90 degrees, normally around the sort of like uh, very low 80s mark at full load in Cinebench 24. Now that's something to kind of keep in mind as I was using Cinebench 24, which is an absolute mentalist when it comes to heat. Um, so critically, lowers temperatures, keeps all your performance, uh, gets those voltages down, technically should be able to uh, at least keep you at your stock performance, but more often than not, it will bring it up a bit as well. In the video guide, it is kind of uh, lengthy, but one of the things to remember is uh, I've done Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI all in one video. You just have to go through the stages. There are all the timestamps. On the website, we've broken it up uh, so that you can have a look at the Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte ones as well. Now, this may not be a foolproof 
uh, answer for some of you out there that have been using them for a long time. Because at the end of the day, if the voltages have been high consistently for a long time, the silicon can start to degrade. So that is already still a worry. Uh, if I was Intel, I'd still be kind of concerned about that as well, because if you have had a gigabyte board, and that would be the those of you out there, like I'm not picking on a brand, it's just like it could have been any of them, but that was, they would be the ones I'd be worried about. Um, they will have had consistently high spikes, and it's just, yeah. yeah. So keep all that in mind. Uh, but it could be the same with all of them. Actually, weirdly, probably less likely with the MSI because as long as you've been uh, keeping on top of BIOS updates, they have been getting consistently better with more stability as well. Uh, one of the things I would do to start off with as well is if, you're, uh, if you've got 6,000 megahertz or above, I'd probably knock your memory timings uh, down for a bit or turn the XMP off while you work on it uh, so that you can make sure that you get your CPU stable then go on to your memory see if the memory makes any difference and then fine-tune um, you will see that some of the voltages within the BIOS to keep the memory timings high will get spiked as well and they can also cause instability problems um, so uh, it's definitely this guide this approach is going to be more hands-on, it's more of an enthusiast approach, but I'm hoping with me showing you with three completely different BIOSes, what to look for, how to go about it, and the steps to go within it should be able to help pretty much anyone at home. You, But there is no, just put this in answer, sadly, because all of your kit, and all of your equipment is different and the processors still have the issue of the silicon lottery meaning they're not all exactly the same they all perform ever so slightly different the voltage dues required are slightly different and even a power supply can make a difference between what voltages may be required so you do have to go through the stages and also it kind of helps you to uh, learn your system to be able to bring the voltages down and then in time because it will happen in time your system may need a little tweak of voltage. Uh, you'll learn how to look for it, how to go about it, and then how to maybe possibly bring it back up. But it's, I haven't had any yet that have needed uh, increased volts after doing the undervolt. But the other side of it is, I've got a 14900KS and uh, three 14900Ks, one being with one of my colleagues, two being here, I use one 14900K as a personal system, I use one 14900K in the graphics card test system, and I have had no crashing or instability problems so far with the undervolts in place. Even this has a 14900K in it, and uh, I've secretly had this uh, looming multiple different benchmarks for a considerable amount of time, wasting an awful lot of electricity, uh, just to see if it there was ever going to get to the point of having instability problems um, but I refused to run my systems without the undervolt because it was just so very unnecessary now I'm not saying I'm God I'm not saying that I have the answer I'm not saying I was ahead of the curve I'm just saying that when I reviewed them to start off with I just wasn't happy back then this is just a happy coincidence that this could also be the answer to problems for you at home now and if it is all those months ago when I made that video it's already out there you can already go and have a look at it and hopefully it will get you on track but please do let me know underneath please like subscribe and comment if this has been helpful and also hit me up on tiny Tom Logan on Twitter or on Facebook if you would like to have a chit chat about it or just go and have a look at some of the stupid stuff that I get up to. So don't forget, link above, links below, website stuff, video stuff. Go and take a look. I hope it helps you out. I'll be back very soon because I kind of need to show you this as well, don't I?